going to work on Karina's legs today, primarily the, the fronts of her legs, along the tibia, along the quads. Though I've heard some discussion that they're now the quints. They've uh, separated two different muscles, so there's five, not four. I can't remember all the names. Rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis. Uh, I don't remember the other. There's a little tightness through here. I'm going to see if I can uh, apply some pressure through there in a way that feels comfortable for me. I'm going to hop up and see if I can bolster her with my thigh. This gives me a little more firm foundation and control because I can pull back with my leg to be able to just put some broad forearm pressure there. Also hook uh, through the quad, maybe up here by the knee. If I get a little bit of pressure, I can ask Karina if she wants pressure towards the knee or away. Which one feels better, towards or away? <laughs> so she likes towards, so I'm gonna grab and pull that direction. There we go. And pressure in the shin's good. There we go. Two points of contact. You start to dance after a while. So if I ask her about the shin here, if I go one or two, which of those do you like? Both of them? Maybe a little bit too? So a little bit down towards the ankle. So in both cases, she wants me to pull towards the knee. She wants me to pull towards the ankle. Tractioning skin working with nerves, making a connection so our nervous system can downregulate. Going to move a little bit higher, and I assume she'll still want the same pressure down towards the foot, about there, move a little higher on the thigh, again with a grip and a pull. The audible breath helps me release and unwind any tension I may hold. It also encourages the receiver to let go. This grip with my hand is starting to get uh, tiresome. I'm going to see if I can grab with my forearm. Maybe I can interlace my fingers. There we go. How's that there? I'm able to stretch my forearm extensors because of my hand position with this right hand. I've still got that broad pressure on the quad with a pull down towards the knee. Because the compression has gotten deeper as I leaned in, there's also some compression onto the calf because I'm pushing her down into my thigh. Try a little more pointed right at the top here. I can change my arm position any way I like that feels comfortable. Is that too sharp, Karina? Okay. When I have her leg lifted and I'm pushing over into the tibialis anterior, there's just a little bit of internal rotation in the hip. A lot of people's hips splay open their feet turn out, I have her foot turned in. So we're sort of even reaching back down into the hip, down into the glutes, down into the low back, just using the leg as a handle. And again, if I decide to grab it here, I can do so with the forearm, big broad part. We'll see if I pull down towards the knee. Not too much. There we go.
check this out again. She could probably use a little more work through the peroneals out to the side here, but I think I want to get into the quad. To do that, I'm going to scoot a little further forward. Gives me a little bit more of an angle. I want to be able to grab onto the thigh. And I'll start with the hands and use another hand to reinforce. Does it still feel better down towards the knee as opposed to up towards the hip? Okay. So I'm going to grab here, see if I can grab with both. How's that there? Now I'm sort of lifting the quads up and off the femur. Gives me a chance to move that tissue around, traction and pull the skin. There. Lift and shake her out. Lift and shake her out. It starts to become a bit, much, a bit of pressure on my hands from that grip. Grip. So I'm going to see if I can change it by gripping like this and then pulling. Now, out or in? Okay. And in my case, again, I, I think that's a better grip, but it's still not exactly what I want. I'm going to change it even more. I'm going to bring her up, and I think I'm going to bring one foot over so it gives me a little more room on the table. I'm going to see if I can reach around. Here we go. What's the angle? The foot placement. I think this will work. Is that too much in the hamstring? There's a little bit of pressure here with my knee, but it gives me some balance and support. I'm trying to see... There we go. If I can get a grip, how's that there? There we go. Now I can change the angle. So instead of just using the hands, I want to see if I can hook into this portion here on the quad. There we go. And I can change my leg and foot placement to make it fit. Not too much pressure underneath. There we go. If I'm thinking about tractioning skin, I'm still applying pressure, some compressive force to the quads. But I'm doing this from a different angle that feels better to me. Joint mobilization, more like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, thinking about a joint lock, using body mechanics away in a way that makes this as easy as possible. This section here felt more dense to me. I'm going to see if I can reverse. Can I grab here and then roll in? How's that? I'm just trying to find a comfortable position that allows me to do this. A little rock. I can lean in several times. Grab and pull. Always trying to minimize the amount of pressure that I'm placing on my own body while working most effectively with the client. Leaning and pulling, can engage a big long slide back towards the knee. I lift her up again, always changing focus. It gives me some more slack there. How's the pressure there? So her foot is in position so she can hold there. It means that I can lift the quad off of the femur and move it around. I'm going to hook here and pull. So I'm, I'm using her foot as this pivot point. Usually the femur is at about 45 degrees to the table. I'm able to hook here at this pivot point. So I'm putting some pressure into the quads, but I'm also getting this traction to her lumbar spine. It's pulling through psoas into her lumbar and hips. Now, if I change the grip, aha, let's see, can I get the 
angle just right, right there. How's that? Right there. Lean and pull. Lean and pull. What angle feels better? There? Okay. So, if I bring her over again and change my body position, this is always the fun part, is trying to figure out what angle, there we go, how's that? Yeah, is what angle works best to be able to access the area. The more successful my practice became, the less what I did looked like massage as I'd been taught classically. Clinical outcomes were better. Clients at times were getting over medical issues that were just soft tissue related because when you address the soft tissue, the symptoms went away. If I hook again with the hands, this is opened up a little bit, looking for air right there, looking for areas of tension. Give her a little jostle. Still hooking into the quads. Still stra tractioning skin there, but lifting and lengthening. Grabbing hold, lifting and lengthening. Grabbing hold. Tractioning out towards the knee and bringing her back to neutral where she was. We're gonna jostle the leg a little. Working into the thigh. Let's see if I can bolster her again. There we go. And I have to align myself just right be able to apply broad pressure. How's that right there? Okay. Now, uh, not too much pressure, correct? Now, what happens if you try to straighten your leg? There you go. Not too much? So on repeat, with your breath, as slow as you want, There you go. And then when you let go, exhale. Ah, there you go. there. A little more here. Let's see if I can use broad pressure there. How about there? Too much? Okay. And when you're ready, you can do the same thing. You can lift the leg. You're like, good luck, buddy. There we go. Too much pressure for me? Yeah. The quads are an area that some massage therapists seem to bypass. I suspect the reason why is because they're using their hands, these little structures, to work on a big structure. If I was on a mat, I'd be using my feet. I'm using a big structure to address a big structure. Biomechanically, it works a bit better, but using a forearm this way, it's a little bit closer. There we go. Back off. Yeah, that feels a little more open. To change the position even more, I'm going to bring her leg out and open. And we can get a little bit more to the inside. I think this is vastus medialis and a little bit of the adductors here. I 
too much in the hip there. Okay. I'm able to apply some broad pressure. And if I grab, it's like I can roll the muscles around the femur, that skin traction, skin movement we were talking about. Send line, send line. Send lines are the energy lines in Thai massage. It's a really basic map that a teacher would give to a student. And my deep suspicion is that the student would just work the line and go, oh, this is fine, and then go, ooh, hey, what's this? Because it feels more dense along that line. Just a simple map that they use in Thai massage. A lot of it overlaps with the rest of the work that I do from pain science, trigger point therapy, things of that sort. Just to give her a change of pace. We had her externally rotated, now I'm gonna rotate her in. Just going through a range of motion there. center again. Little jostle. If I hook around the knee, it means I'm supporting the knee. I'm able to jostle even into her lumbar spine by giving her this support. And I can come around to the opposite side. Taking a seat taking my time. Always taking time to breathe, to go slow. There's no need to rush through the work. And if anything, the muscle tension is created by anxiety, is created by fight or flight and the nervous system, is created by, we gotta do it now. It's like, well, we have the rest of our lives to get it done. It's a process. Again, right on the outside of the shin, right along the quads. Figuring out what I think will work best in the time given. I'm gonna switch. This time I'm gonna pull her towards me. to there. You can lean in traction. Lean in traction. If I hook the forearms around, you can start to see this little twist. Working from this side to grab and twist some of the quads around, a little traction there. Whatever you do, make sure it feels good to the receiver. Intense is fine, but when you check their facial expression, are they like blissed out? Because that's what you want. As much as possible. Pleasure in and of itself can be healing, giving them a new experience of their body, working through things manually. And that external rotation, which is attempted from this side of the table, allows her to get into position. I can come in, ooh, little tense through there. Then leaning across and down.
encouraging you to feel th your way through the session. People will sometimes want to know, well, how did you know to do this? Or how did you know to do that? It's really just by feel and practice. I often just think about what would I want to receive, and I go towards that. At a certain stage, it's improvisation in the moment based on what feels good to Karina and I. Little slide out across the thigh and you make it up. And how's it feel, Karina? Exactly. I try to think about in this moment what feels good to me and what would feel good to her. And if I can make both of those match, that's the best body work. That's why my sessions lengthened to three hours. I was able to work on somebody from their toes to the top of their head, take my time, breathe, relax, stretch, unwind, compress, slowly work through things. If I bring her up again, along the IT band, now a little more lateral. I'm able to hook around, not too much on your knee. Okay. I'm able to pull and traction. And we don't often have this sort of traction in our daily life. People aren't pulling on us this way. Decompresses the hip, decompresses the lumbar vertebra, helps pull on so is and lengthen the lumbar spinal column. And bring her back down again to neutral, feeling my way through. Where's the tension? Still a little out here, this external rotation. Combating that by rolling her in. And a grab at the ankle. And right around the greater trochanter, just to lean in. Right around the ankle bone, right around the greater trochanter, internal rotation. And palm press, finger press my way up. Since it's a bit more straight on, it's like a more compression than just traction than we've done before. Sort of built up to this. Hands are fairly sharp, pointed as I'm doing this. Especially through the IT band, it's like you're pushing parts of the IT band into the femur. They don't have anywhere to go so the compression feels quite deep because you're pushing it right into bone so being mindful about the amount of pressure that I use back into this part of the shin again applying some thumb pressure and shaking her out applying some thumb pressure shaking it out right through there Bring your leg out to the side. How's that? Okay. Now, if I come in from here, too much? I'm leaning to the insides of my hands right there. It's a little more pointed than just completely flat palms. Can you tell me, Karina, about there? That starts to feel more dense to me. So slowly, I want you to lift your leg, like you're straightening it. There you go. And when you're ready, you can let it bend again. She's like, gently. 
Princess Bride quotes for the win. Have fun storming the castle. Right there. Ooh, okay. So if you give you some pressure right there, how's that? Okay, so I'm just gonna hold here. Can you give me that leg straighten again? And lift for me. There you go. Uh, that was nice, you were playing with that movement. She not only lifted and lengthened the leg, she lightly rotated the femur. She's learning to work with my pressure. It's very common when I work with clients that once they understand what I'm doing, they'll understand the small variance that we can make to work on things. Oh, much better, much better. That opened up, much better. Just to jostle from the other side to balance her out. How's that feel? Thank you so much, Karina. I'll see you again soon.